I am so grateful to be part of ISMB and BOSC in 2023. Thank you for this invitation. I'm Monica Munoz Torres, and I'm an associate professor of biomedical informatics in the School of Medicine at the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus. I'm here to talk about standards that connect biomedical and behavioral research to artificial intelligence in the Bridge to Artificial Intelligence program. First, I would like to thank the team that gets the actual work done. It is my absolute privilege to lead the work of the standards core of the Bridge to Artificial Intelligence project, which includes our researchers, leaders, and NIH project scientists. I'd like to offer you an outline of what this presentation will contain. First, I will introduce you to the Bridge to Artificial Intelligence project and the crucial needs NIH identified that could be addressed using AI over innovative collection of health data. Then I'll discuss our objectives and data landscape assessment over the past eight months. After that, I will discuss the salient themes we have identified as the focus of concerted efforts to standardize knowledge representation. I will then describe our available resources. And finally, I'll give you an overview of upcoming deliverables. This project is not intended to be business as usual. The innovation aspects are manifold, and, and none the least the fact that the goals of the Bridge to Artificial Intelligence project start and end with the community that generates, contributes, and participates in the research products. I'll tell you more about this in a moment. This project results from the combined visions of the National Human Genome Research Institute and the Common Fund of the National Institutes of Health in the United States. We plan to generate new data sets and best practices for using AI to analyze health data. And we also want to ensure that the data produced are from heterogeneous sources. They are findable, accessible, interoperable, and reproducible with traceability, licensure, and connectivity, and ensure that they are ready to be used with artificial intelligence approaches. Can we answer the question of what it means to capture data for AI ethically? And we also want to ensure that the workforce that's involved in generating these data has a robust portfolio of skills and is more diverse in terms of geographic origin, professional background, technical abilities, gender, et cetera. The scientific pipeline that will lead us to insightful discovery in, in biomedical and behavioral research using AI flows from data preparation to model development to model evaluation. And the Bridge to AI project focuses on this data preparation portion, which involves capturing data that will address NIH's grand challenges in this field. Molecular, physiological, and behavioral data will be collected to pursue biomedical and behavioral research discoveries. And planning for data generation will begin with intentional team building strategies that account for the evaluation of progress while also informing the adoption of ethical principles for generating and organizing the data. These will guide the selection of standards that can be leveraged to develop and to optimize tools for data acquisition, harmonization, validation, and ultimately dissemination. These products will be central to our efforts to ensure a better prepared research workforce. And these data will eventually be stored in public repositories and utilized in the development of models that leverage the readiness of the data prepared in the previous step from model-driven experimental design to AIML model development to insightful discovery. The products of the Bridge to AI project enable an analysis-first approach to develop these models. The Bridge to AI consortium is comprised of four data generation projects listed here and six teams or cores that work toward the integration, dissemination, and evaluation of these data, also known as the Bridge Center. The consortium tries to build this bridge over which ethical, inclusive, and interpretable data sets flow into biomedical and behavioral research in a usable form that works for scientists, for engineers, for physicians, and for patients. Each of the course focuses on the themes that I shared in the earlier slides over here, teaming ethics standards, all of these. And each DGP includes six modules that correspond with these themes one on standards, one on, uh, you know, one on ethics, one on teaming, one on tools, one on data acquisition, and skills and workforce development. 
we intend to integrate expertise across all of these projects. And in this way, the four standards modules across the data generation projects and the standards core form the standards working group. The same organization is repeated across each theme shown here by these down pointing arrows that you see on the right of the columns. The standards working group ensures that bridge to AI research outputs align with community driven uh, data standards. The standards core of the Bridge Center tries to develop best practices for data collection, deposition, quality assurance, a query, dissemination, and integration across the Bridge to AI data generation projects, ensuring that the standards implemented are generalizable as possible in biomedical and behavioral applications, that they produce reproducible, credible outputs that are useful to the broader scientific community and are updated in an efficient and well provenance manner. So let me tell you about this goals in landscape assessment. To efficiently analyze data that results from computational modeling and AI over medicine and biomedical research, along with data in advancements in wearable technology for physiological measurement, uh, these data need to be well-defined. They have to be freely accessible and they have to be understandable by machines. And in addition to that, implementation of AI ML models requires considerable skill and time so that you can locate appropriate models, you can configure them for, for specific cases and adapt them to differentiate the uh, computational environments. And because of this, significant data standardization needs to be done before artificial intelligence and, and, and machine learning can fully deliver on their potential for biomedical discovery. So we plan to address these challenges by first, capturing community needs and aggregating standards, requirements, and specifications, empowering our research community to extract more meaningful insights from their data. Um, we will identify and outline scientific use cases that best capture the needs of the AI ML research community to leverage biomedical requirements and assist in guiding the development and implementation of standards. We'll specify and implement and document protocols and tools for contributing to and maintaining standards along the development life cycle. Um, and, and we'll have information, specifications, and documentation about the community input and generated um, use cases that will be cataloged and made available to the community through a web portal. And the portal will be accompanied by vir a virtual control uh, registry of the Bridge to AI standards with multiple interfaces for researchers to discover, to access, and to use the standards that best match their use cases. Second, we will coordinate the implementation of standards and enable data sharing and reuse. So in order to enable AI ML research uh, communities to define and adopt standards, we plan to offer a modality agnostic, semantics aware specification framework and modeling language called LinkML, marked here in the middle. And, and this is going to allow the community to implement interoperable schemas and APIs. And we're also going to offer services that coordinate standards adoption and facilitate uh, and integrate terminology ecosystems around existing resources. One of the most pressing needs of all Bridge to AI standards modules in the DGPs is an array of tools and services that can help them streamline the ingest and quality control. So we plan to develop recommendations for data transformation, for harmonization, uh, and tools that enable data providers to validate their data, perform basic quality checks, annotate data, and maintain provenance and attribution. You're going to hear more from Link uh, from uh, about LinkML from Dr. Sierra Moxon in one of the following talks. But for now, I'll share that LinkML, which stands for Linked Data Modeling Language, is a polymorphic and pluralistic data modeling language designed to work in concert with uh, uh, existing data model solutions like you know, JSON schema and SQLDDL. LinkML is going to provide a simple standard way to describe schemas and data models, reporting standards and data dictionaries um, a, ranging from that, that will allow you to like adorn these with, with semantics, with IRIs from standard vocabularies and ontologies ranging from like, you know, things like schema.org to very rich uh, oboe ontologies. So to enable us to tackle questions about standardization and harmonization and data integration and linkage, 
we asked the data generation projects to offer details on example standardization needs to it, it, that they have to perform AI and to give us details about the standards they thought were needed, which ones they were already in use it, using and, and why. And we asked them questions about what validation looks like to them. So this is this process is still ongoing, and we're continuing to gather these requirements as we speak. Uh, this Thursday, July 27th, we'll be holding the last of four fireside style chats, um, which we have been using to spotlight the functional genomics uh, DGPs to refine our understanding of their data landscape and, and improve their understanding of how we can assist them in the implementation of standards and best practices. And the DGPs, are focused on mapping uh, on several things. So the first one called functional genomics is, is focused on mapping cell architecture to assess whether it is possible to map the spatial temporal architecture of human cells and use these maps towards interpreting the role of cell function and structure in health and, and disease. Um, there's another one that is focused on using boys as a biomarker for human development, uh, for respiratory, for sleep disorders, for mental health and neurological conditions. And there's another one that is focused on reconstructing a, say, a temporal atlas of disease and health to expand the IML applications in clinical care. And lastly, one that a generation project focused on, the, on, on developing a model to predict adverse events from uh, intensive care units monitoring data to, to improve recovery from the acute illness uh, through um, artificial intelligence. So you can see some commonalities across these projects. For example, uh, you can see whole genome sequencing data, some imaging data, clinical data, data from surveys, social determinants of health, and you can also see heterogeneity. So, so the, these data types and requirements across the GPs also show evidence of heterogeneity and in the salient need for integration of multimodal data and issues of privacy and security have been guiding how we operationalize the generation of core resources for this project. As a result, we've identified a few areas of focus and to facilitate the discussion in, in advancing strategies to define best practices in selecting or expanding existing standards, uh, we've, we've identified a few needs, um, a few areas for conversation. And so the conversations on standards for representing medical imaging and genomics information have already started and spinning soon will have two subgroups, it's kind of like a um, birds of a feather thing as we do here. And, and we'll be starting up their discussions on the utilization of large language models to organize unstructured biomedical text, for example, using ontologies, and one or two more subgroups that are gonna be focused on best practices to capture uh, in, into process and to distribute clinical and survey related data. So the integration of you know, things like the integration of multimodal data, deciding on a standard set for, uh, for, for the representation of waveform from boys or wearables, and the standardization of sample collection and metadata are other example topics. So let's refresh our mind uh, about that first objective to gather requirements and to generate some resources and focus your, your mind on those um, requirements gathering and uh, on the registry. So to address our goals, we've, we've begun the development of resources that I'm showing here. A use case catalog, which helps us define a core set of applications for interoperable and standardized data. And, and the general categories in this catalog include things like data acquisition, integration, standardization, and the ones listed here. The link at the bottom takes you to our uh, publicly available use case catalog. There's a standards registry that ensures the integration of the standards that are being uh, developed throughout the life cycle with the bridge to artificial intelligence. And it also narrows the ample space of standards to, to what is actually relevant. And so this provides computational access and, and utilities for schemas and standards rather than just links to outdated PDFs. Um, and you can see some darker parts of this figure that illustrate what our work has been focused on. Uh, which is the organization of the current knowledge into data schemas to produce a blueprint of all available bridge to AI standards and use cases. So these are publicly available open source, early work that will continue to evolve over the next four years. And we look forward to welcoming feedback from the BOSC and the ISMB communities. 
So please recall our goals. I'm showing them here on the left, so you can contextualize, contextualize our, our deliverables. We've begun inventorying the DGP standards modules uh, throughout their goals and plans and data and standards, and we're currently working on defining what it means for a data set to be AI ready in the Rich to AI Consortium from the perspective of our group. And then we will, of course, join the cores across the consortium to finalize recommendations. We also plan to work with the consortium and keep an ear to the ground so things don't remain static based solely on the initial proposals. And we promise to continuously seek what's happening outside the consortium walls to inform what we do in Bridge to AI. And lastly, we're committing to coordinate work across all cores to support the Bridge to AI data generation projects in the best way that we can. To paraphrase Sir Isaac Newton, I, if I can see far into the future, it's because I stand on the shoulders of giants. And I'm grateful for the support of my colleagues as co-principal investigators in this journey to build a bridge that takes us into ethical, inclusive, and interoperable data sets for uh, artificial intelligence in, um, in how this powers biomedical and behavioral research. My heartfelt thanks to all of you for your attention and to ISMB and BOSC for the kind invitation to join you today. Please feel free to find me after today's session or email me at the address is listed here. Uh, I have listed a few other projects that I'm involved in. Let's chat later if you're interested in learning more about any of them. I kindly thank you for this and uh, goodbye.